YouTube, this is Anthony bringing you another video. Today we're sitting in front of my two nano tanks uh, because I wanted to give you a few tips and tricks that I've kind of played with in order to grow dwarf baby tears without CO2. Now I do want to make a quick disclaimer, this is still a medium to highlight plant so unfortunately, well you know what, I've never tried it so I won't completely put a cork on that, but it may not work in a low light setup, but it is definitely working for me in a medium light setup, so I do want to share these tips with you. Okay, so tip number one, uh, and if you're planning out a planted aquarium, chances are you're going to already have this in there, but it's have a good substrate for the plants to feed off of. Uh, dwarf baby tears, just like any other plant. It is a stem plant, but it does need a good substrate just to give it that extra boost. Um, I keep mine in a dirty tank with a sand cap, um, and it's grown, it's grown well for me in, in that. Um, as you can see, I do have it mixed in with some pebbles, so it does grow a little bit slower in there. Um, but um, the substrate is going to be your main foundation that you're going to want to work with to get a uh, dwarf baby tears growing in a low tech setup. Alright, tip number two, let the tank establish. Um, and what I mean by this is let the tank's um, nutrient level settle out, let it go through all of its algae blooms um, that you always have when you first set up a tank. Um, in my experience, if the dwarf baby tears don't have to struggle to grow and struggle against um, algae or cloudy water, it makes it so much easier to get them established and growing in your tank and looking good. All right, everyone, tip number three I have for you today is to have some sort of algae uh, eating or um, algae grazing shrimp in your tank. Um, and what this will do is once you put in those dwarf baby tears, um, most of the times they will be grown immersed um, and that immersed growth will start to melt away. And that can attract algae to grow onto the dwarf baby tears. And if you have the shrimp in your tank, they'll clean off the, the melt um, and they'll allow new growth to come in. And then once you start getting that new growth, the shrimp will continue to clean it from any debris or food particles that are in your water. And that'll help keep your dwarf baby tears uh, clean and free of algae. Um, I don't know if you can see it in this tank, but I do have some algae on this dwarf baby tears. And that's because I had it in this tank for a while without any shrimp. And so that algae took hold. Um, but now little by little, those shrimp are working on it and keeping it at bay. And you can see I'm getting lots of growth on here. All right, and tip number four, my final tip for you today, if you wanna grow dwarf baby tears without CO2, uh, and this one actually can transfer over if you're growing it with CO2 as well, is avoid having any fish or critters in your tank that like to dig. Um, dwarf baby tears are, is very fragile um, and their roots are very small so it doesn't really take much to uproot this plant. Um, and as you can see here in this, this is my um, five gallon fluval spec with my Royal Blues and there are also some uh, Malaysian trumpet snails in here. Uh, and you can see very plainly that they've uprooted this dwarf baby tears. It's, it's still holding on, um, but it's, it's barely there. I have to often replant it, um, and so I'll be working on pulling out the Malaysian trumpet snails out of here. Um, but any other digging fish would include some of the loaches, um, quarry cats. Unfortunately, they will not be friendly with this plant. Not that they're going to eat it, but they just will keep constantly digging around it, which won't help the, the plant take root and grow. Alright everybody, so I hope these tips help you out a little bit. Um, if you've been considering dwarf baby tears, but you're not quite wanting to install a CO2, or maybe you just want to try them without CO2, 
I hope these tips helped you out a little bit. And I also hope they kind of disseminate some of the uh, fear that's kind of associated with dwarf baby tears. It is a little bit more of a demanding plant, um, but I think it's been blown so out of proportion that so many people are afraid to try it. Um, and if there's any other plants out there, just dwarf baby tears, any other that might be higher light, they may be listed as needing CO2, don't be afraid to try them out. Um, if you've got the right uh, substrate and the right lighting, chances are you might just be able to grow it. 